Item five is a discussion. We're going to have a little discussion uh, continuing about the Metro Health System Campus Transformation Project. And we have Mr. Oftermat with us today. Hello, Mr. Chairman. We um, members of the committee. Thank you. We are due for a, a final vote on um, um, this project and this legislation, and so uh, this is uh, an opportunity. If there are any questions uh, left, to uh, ask the county's financial advisor. Do you have uh, any sort of comments to make, or are you? Or are you just here for questions? I, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, primarily just here for questions. Uh, if the committee requires any refresher or clarification on structure, uh, I'm happy to provide that okay. well, as I, well. I, I, anybody has any questions of any kind, of course, that's what we're here for. Um, I know that in particular, uh, uh, Councilman Schron had asked some questions, and I think we at least want to make sure we get that covered. Yeah, you, you probably heard them. I have. Uh, uh, Councilman Schron, um, let me make sure I re restate them ap appropriately. If I'm missing anything, let me know. I'll do my best to address it. Um, in, um, in the municipal bond world, uh, uh, there are often uh, th there are broad obligations of government which often don't require funded reserve funds or the establishment of a comp accompanying bond reserve funds. And then there are uh, other types of financings that are often undertaken by state or local government or agencies that uh, are not general obligations of the government, if you will, and are more limited to specific revenues for specific purposes. That's obviously what we have here. Uh, so in these cases, there is often uh, a reserve fund that is available for annual to cover annual debt service shortfalls if they would ever appear. Uh, over the years, those have been funded with a cash contribution, and, and generally these reserve funds are held by a bank, uh, a bank trustee, so that they're restricted and available to the bondholders nearly immediately if need be. Uh, in addition to cash, uh, oftentimes they're funded by, as part of the bond issue, in essence, the reserve funds are borrowed. Uh, the county's done that from time to time uh, in its various bond issues. Uh, also, there are other less used vehicles like bank letters of credit or insurance products that are available in lieu of these cash or bond proceeds funded reserve funds. And from time to time, depending on the necessity, there are other uh, hybrid forms of approach to this. Uh, in this case, uh, it appeared at the time, still appears expedient to apply letter of credit. Now, I, uh, I understand the question was related to other alternatives explored, and particularly whether or not uh, layered reinsurance uh, or some similar type of approach uh, was examined here. Uh, we did examine alternatives, uh, including the prospect of some sort of layered support uh, which could be viewed 
as reinsurance. Uh, we actually used to see those kinds of products, not necessarily for bond reserve funds, uh, but applied more uh, from time to time. Now you rarely see them in municipal finance back in the 1990s where uh, things more generally were uh, products like this credit enhancement, if you will, was more generally available. Uh, very expensive in the case of reinsurance. Uh, I spoke to, as a matter of, since the financial crisis, uh, before the financial crisis, there was a goodly number of insurance companies that were specializing in municipal bond insurance products, including these reserve fund type products. Uh, they would also do, venture into things that venture into products that other uh, uh, more wide-ranging insurance companies would like providing reinsurance on construction, uh, construction guarantees, for example, or other private company guarantees of bond debt service, which even the county has seen from time to time in its history on economic development projects. Uh, the last one of those that I saw, though, uh, was 2000, 2001, very expensive. I explored with, there's really two remaining active, were probably a handful, half dozen, maybe seven, active municipal bond insurers prior to the financial crisis. Now there's really only two. A third uh, is involved from time to time. Uh, discussed with them the notion of reinsurance or basically backing up the the bank letter of credit to uh, lessen the county's obligation uh, or to provide an additional buffer uh, on the county's obligation. In all of these cases, uh, the question came back about how the county was going to stand behind these products, uh, either with basically a promise to pay, which is one of the uh, one of the approaches that we've talked to with, uh, talked about with the banks currently, uh, or applying actual security like the county's ability to generate uh, revenues not generated by taxation. Uh, generally speaking. Uh, the county's ability to to levy taxes and generate uh, tax generate revenue via taxation uh, directly is off the table here, both legally and I think from a uh, from the standpoint from a business standpoint as it relates to the county. Um, but the non tax revenue security may be on the table if it yields uh, uh, if it yields a satisfactory arrangement for the county. But in every one of these cases, uh, the three insurers that I talked to about a reinsurance or a layered approach uh, wanted to know what the county's security was going to be. So what we naturally uh, evolved to in our conversation was, okay, well then let's forget about this bank letter of credit and what would it mean to apply the insurance product, which is sort of a more traditional approach, more directly in lieu of the letter of credit or in lieu of bond proceeds funded reserve funds. Uh, and um, there are some interesting products out there that Possibly not this particular time, but perhaps at some point in the future, and certainly for lots of my other clients. Um, but be that as it may, uh, uh, an arrangement where an insurer might provide a, an insurance policy uh, for the life of the bonds, and that's what would happen in this case, but would require upfront payment uh, for only part of the time, say 
10 years, maybe 15 years up front, and then an annual renewal afterward, which would in essence give the issuer the opportunity to terminate the insurance policy, just like any other insurance policy, property casualty policy that you might have personally. If you don't pay the premium, the policy lapses. Uh, and in this case, because it's related to financing, would require some notice. But in essence, if, uh, if the insured chooses not to pay, the policy lapses. And again, it, it, in comparing that type of a product, in this case, to the letter of credit, I hope this is not turning into just a bunch of mumbo jumbo for everybody. But uh, in that case, the insurance product would uh, likely be required to hang on longer, for a longer period of time, perhaps considerably longer, than the letter of credit may be applied. Uh, if Metro's feasibility consultant's uh, analysis comes true, or even comes mostly true, uh, th this letter of credit in lieu of the reserve fund facility uh, may not be around for 10 years uh, because the feasibility consultant perceives that there's at least a chance that uh, Metro's revenues divided by the annual maximum debt service need uh, would be equal to or greater than a covenant that the counties negotiated with Metro that would allow the county to uh, be removed from its obligation to provide uh, uh, the debt service reserve fund letter of credit product. I hope that was not Council. too weedy. <clears throat> I, I, I was staying with you, I, I believe, the whole way. <laughs> uh, it, was, it wasn't really, I didn't think it was too weedy. Um, my, my concern is that we, uh, as the county, are being put on for the risk that if that, that payment's not made, we could be at the expense of 80 plus million dollars. Is that, is that, is that a correct sum, summation? That is correct, yes. Okay. And so all I was looking at or asking on behalf of my colleagues up here is if there are alternative products out there, and now we didn't hear until just now that there actually were alternative products that were studied to the extent that were they priced, the three three products that you looked at? I, uh, Mr. Chairman to the Councilman, uh, yes. I Now, uh, because the conversation was still somewhat general, exploratory. Uh, we did not take a bid, per se, but uh, we got, we got indic indicative pricing. Yes, we did. Okay, so we, we don't actually have, we don't know actually what it would cost us, but it's like, it's like an annuity, basically, for all intents and purposes, that we would pay, pay a, a flat lump sum and that would at least provide us coverage for 10 years, and now at least you're supporting the position that probably at 10 years, either the insurance is not going to be needed, nor will potentially the letter of credit be needed. But in the meantime, we'll have paid one time for the risk as opposed to being on the hook for the risk for whatever length of time uh, for the entire month. What, what, was, what was the pricing? Just, for, just so, I mean, this body is the financial body. We're the ones that, what was the cost of those three products so we can be making an intelligent decision do we take a risk of 80 million or do we pay x um, mr chairman uh councilman Shrine, i just want to clarify for the record one thing you, you noted that what i was saying was that the county would probably not need this for 10 years i did not use the word probably okay uh right. it, it, Might it's, not. okay if, if the it, financial it, forecast it's, it's possible uh, that the uh, that the reserve facility would not be needed for ten years, but uh, uh, I've got an opinion on Metro's credit uh, and the possible uh, variations to the credit, given what we've all talked about is going on. Uh, but uh, uh, but 
I wouldn't say that it probably wouldn't be needed. Uh, the, uh, in the, the cost differential, uh, well, uh, let me back up with these types of insurance products. Uh, because it's uh, somewhat confusing, uh, you know, back before, certainly back before the financial crisis, these uh, financing in related insurance products were a lot like your <clears throat> uh, any other property casualty uh, or other casualty type of insurance. You paid for a risk. If there was a claim, you got paid. Maybe your premium went up afterwards, but basically you paid your premium. If you had a claim, the claim got paid, you were done. In these cases for financial products, even if you're paying for insurance up front, you're still required to reimburse the insurer and reimburse the insurer with interest. Uh, in a similar uh, type of an arrangement that I would expect after the county's done with a letter of credit bank, so the arrangement would look very similar with the letter of credit bank. Now, having said that, uh, the potential savings uh, related uh, to insurance versus the letter of credit product would uh, come into play uh, only in the case where... Um, the terms matched up. Uh, it's likely that the requirement to maintain the insurance, and by the way, to have the county remain in the Metro deal, would be a much longer term requirement. Uh, probably not the life of the bonds, but it would be a much longer requirement than perhaps the letter of credit would be. Uh, and in that case, the economics changes. Um, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a risk evaluation, <clears throat> but um, uh, at this point, right now, <clears throat> it's my judgment that the uh, that the potential term differential on the letter of credit <clears throat> makes that a so somewhat of a more desirable product. As, as opposed to uh, the as opposed to the insurance product um, I, maybe in a future situation uh, uh, if you know through negotiation that might change but based on what we know right now uh, that would be my judgment is that on balance the letter of credit is probably a better overall value I think most people that get their early financing package in their family are used to buying insurance for the risk if they die or whatever ca catastrophe, so the mortgage is covered, so the bank is covered, so that right. that's that's a pretty typical risk in this uh, that, that people are used to. And you have a price, you have a number, you have everything about that, if you put a little bit higher down payment. Why can't, uh, can we get the numbers, whatever it is, just so I, I just so for my own edification, what it was that you compared in, uh, so that we've got that uh, wherever the whoever it was that provided you the companies, whether it's Lloyd's of London or wherever that where those things came from, so that we can see at least because it's just a risk and reward analysis mm -hmm. uh, in regards to that. Uh, if if at ten years we have to renew an insurance policy, I assume the risk will go down substantially if they've been making payments for ten years. The cost of that policy will go down. Everything will go down in regard. Is that is that logical? But that's logical, actually, in this case, depending on what a final agreement would be, and it would likely be, you know, we're talking about 40-year bonds here, uh, it would likely be that the, uh, that the upfront payment would probably be for 20, so that the minimum time frame that the county would have to be in the deal was 20 years, as opposed to maybe as little as eight uh, for the letter of credit, uh, maybe uh, uh, the 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 firm that was uh, uh, the firm that was willing to toss around ideas and potential numbers 
was a, f- a firm by the name of Build America Mutual. Uh, they are uh, they're a municipal bond insurance company. They're not really a mutual company. They thought that was the way they wanted to start, but uh, uh, they kept the name. Uh, 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 and they were looking at you know a twenty year upfront payment in the two hundred and twenty five basis point uh, range, uh, and that would be due immediately. Uh, uh, that would generate a payment of, uh, depending on the final size of the letter of credit, two and a half million dollars or so. Whereas in the in the case of the letter of credit, um, uh, and as you you may recall, in the county's agreement with uh, with Metro, I believe Mr. Kelly noted this in one of his prior uh, presentations to you, that there's an agreement where the county's annual limitation is $350,000. I don't know whether we're going to be able to meet that threshold or not, but I'm hoping that we'll be at least very close to that. So the, um, and given the fact that most of the terms and conditions uh, and a likely a, a, a near certainty where we're going back and forth with the banks on county security applied. Um, uh, it's a near certainty that the county would have to pledge security to the insurance company. They don't insure hospitals. Uh, it's no credit commentary on hospitals per se. It's just not a level of expertise. But uh, what they do know is Cuyahoga County's credit. Uh, they do a lot of Ohio business. They know the county's credit, uh, and they would be willing to take a risk on county security. Uh, uh, the county may or may not apply similar security in the case of a bank. So I think those, those are value judgments that are... Uh, it, uh, not directly quantifiable, but you, you have to take them into account as you value this. Okay. Well, just if you can just pass that the work papers on that sure. analysis over to to our staff, uh, just so we can look at it, because it's just just a matter of whether we're risking. It's not just the three hundred and fifty; it's three hundred and fifty plus a catastrophic event of the the whole eighty million. I, I think <clears throat> is what could take place in any one of those first ten potential years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, versus buying a product that is going to cost us more, but be uh, it would be buying its insurance. Just- uh, I, again, Mr. Chairman, yeah. uh, to, to reiterate, the reimbursement obligation on the insurance would still be there, so you would still have all the same risks, all the same catastrophic risks, uh, even with the insurance policy, okay. if you can believe it. It's hard to still call that insurance, but uh, that's what it is these days. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, Councilman, thank you very much for uh, 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 bringing an alternative uh, perspective to what we're doing here, and um, uh, we hope we've been able to satisfy um, your uh, curiosity about uh, alternatives. And um, if there is anybody uh, else who has any questions for Mr. Oftermat, Councilwoman. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Oftermat, you mentioned the feasibility study should prove Metro is viable, when will that feasibility study be done? Uh, uh, Councilwoman Conwell, my understanding is, and th- there are folks from Metro here, my understanding is, is that feasibility study is uh, being finalized now uh, and should be ready uh, uh, be- certainly before uh, the bond prospectus is distributed to investors. So. Certainly, at some point within the the next couple of weeks, I would think. So that that mean means to us, even though if we vote and pass it tonight, if if it comes back and the feasibility study is not prudent, it won't go through. Uh, I I think it's a fair statement that if the feasibility study shows that this project and the project financing is not feasible. <clears throat> um, and it's 
the feasibility consultant is an extremely reputable, uh, uh, very well-known consultant in this area, then uh, the bonds will not be able to be issued. Uh, could I ask the law department, is there some verbiage in the contract that states that? Well, we're voting on it tonight. And so we're voting on the basis that the feasibility study is going to prove that Metro has the funding that they say they have and that they're viable. But I'm saying if that comes back, we're doing the final vote tonight, I do believe. Mm -hmm. If that comes back saying that they're not viable, um, where does that leave the county? Simple question. Uh, I believe that... Uh it's holding his hand up. I'm, I think you may have, I, I have the feeling that when you were a kid in class, you were always the one holding your hand up. Though. <laughs> but, but, but come on forward. Yeah, not, and, uh, not, not true. I just, uh, uh, Council Owen and Conwell, I don't think you were at the executive committee meeting last week. The feasibility study was actually shared in executive session with the council. Gotcha. So, my, so, that's so that just, question was answered in yeah, the executive yeah, yeah, session? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm sure someone will tell me the answer before we vote tonight. Uh, the the uh, feasibility study and the consultant gave verbal notice of what their opinion is. It's just it's being written. That's so, so there is almost, I can guarantee you, there is no chance that the feasibility study is going to be uh, in any way negative to Metro. And, and by the way, Councilwoman, the verbal confirmation of that was provided directly to me by the feasibility consultant. Okay, Councilwoman. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Oftermat? Any other questions on this issue um, from any member of the council? Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Any uh, miscellaneous business? Sure. Um, any public comment unrelated to the agenda? No, Mr. President. All right. Well, this committee of the whole is adjourned. We'll meet at uh, 5 o'clock for our regularly scheduled council meeting. <laughs>